Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Native News Update. It's Friday, January 4th, and many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. After a 25-day hunger strike by Etiwapiskat Chief Teresa Spence, the Prime Minister of Canada, Stephen Harper, has agreed to meet with First Nation leaders. The meeting, set for January 11th, would be coordinated by the Assembly of First Nations and would focus on treaties, Aboriginal rights, and economic development. At a Wapiscot chief, whose 25-day hunger strike forced the meeting, says she will continue to abstain from food until the meeting actually happens, and she is satisfied with the outcome. I'm just really overjoyed and also you know, to hear the, uh, the Crown and the Prime Minister and the governments that they're going to meet with us on uh, January 11th. And I'll still be here. Uh, my hunger strike is for that. Meeting personally, Chief? Yes, I'm taking my, uh, my uh, Raymond and Jean with me, and uh, my spokesperson and my friends with me. I'll be here with my chiefs. And uh, what, what do you need to hear to end your hunger, st hunger strike from that meeting? Uh, we'll see what the results are. Uh, if there's, uh, if there's a really uh, a positive results because there's a, a lot of issues that we need to discuss and uh, really uh, work together as partners. My apologies. I'm also emotional because I have been here since day one with Teresa and uh, we're all overwhelmed and over overjoyed by the tremendous amount of support that we received, not only here in Canada, but across the world. And for now, we like to say thank you and uh, uh, as uh, Chief Spence alluded to, they will continue to remain here until the, the meeting begins and based on the outcome of that first meeting on January 11th. And uh, we'll see what happens uh, on that time. Uh, respectfully, the, right now, now is not the time to celebrate. And respectfully, this is a peaceful movement. And we acknowledge the, the work, especially the Idle No More movement, the youth movement, the women, the men, and all the elders. And we're a peaceful nation, and uh, we, we need to rebuild that nation, the nation relationship with, with the government of Canada. Is the meeting what you wanted? Is that yes, we acknowledge the uh, commitment made by the Prime Minister's office. We will wait for the outcome of that of that meeting come January 11th. A week is a long time away, Chief Bud. How are you doing? And how are you going to hold up for another week at least? Well, with all the prayers and uh, supports, and you know, drinking a lot of fluids, uh, I'll be okay. She's getting a lot of support. She's cared for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So. We're a peaceful nation. You know, if, if Idle No More wishes to continue to, to show support by demonstrating, then then they will have to do what they need to do. Do you feel connected at all to Idle No More? We're all a unified nation. At this point, we're all a unified nation. So, yeah. So, I just want to hear this again. You're not going to end a hunger strike until you see the outcomes from this meeting? The meeting, when the meeting happens, and based on the outcome of that meeting. And afterwards, they need, there needs to be a succession of meetings, because all, all these issues cannot be solved in one meeting or two meetings. Okay. We need to have a series of meetings to address all these issues of poverty. So you're talking about sort of like a constitutional sort of level type of meeting where you have tables so across the plate. Like again, we'll have to address that when the meeting comes. We can address that right now. And Chief Spence, how will you know when you can eat again? What is the measure that will say, tonight I can eat? Well, we're going to the day comes. Yeah. Are you going to the meeting for sure on January 11th? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be there with my chiefs. In light of the recent announcement of Prime Minister Stephen Harper meeting with the demands of Chief Spence, supporters of Idle No More look for direction on what's the next move for the grassroots movement. Sheila McLean, one of the original founders of Idle No More, posted on her Facebook that Idle No More activities will not stop until we reach our two goals, Indigenous sovereignty and the protection of land and water. Once we reach these goals, we will continue to work to protect them. In essence, Idle No More is here to stay. Both Spence's hunger strike and the force behind the Idle No More movement was sparked after chiefs of the annual assembly of first nations which was held in early december 
raised concerns about the state of the treaties and decided to take those concerns to the Hill. In other I don't know more news, on January 28th, just six hours before the Canadian Parliament resumes in Ottawa, one of the four founding women of Idle No More will present a petition to the Crown in London, United Kingdom. This petition calls on the British Crown to honor the treaties it signed with the sovereign Na First Nations by revoking royal assent for the eight illegitimate treaty destruction bills. For more information on the petition, you can check out Idle No More London on YouTube. After nearly 20 years in action, the United States House of Representatives let the Violence Against Women Act, which supports critical rape and domestic violence counseling programs and other violence prevention strategies, silently expire January 3rd. Earlier this month, Democratic senators wrote to female Republican House representatives, urging them to push the legislation within their party. The women indicated that they were open about the Senate's broader Violence Against Women Act reauthorization bill, which incorporated provisions extending protections and services to 30 million more women in the LGBT and Native American communities. Democratic Senator Patty Murray from Washington has been an active proponent of the Senate's provisions and says she plans to reintroduce the legislation in 2013. Vice President Joe Biden has been working closely with House Majority Leader Eric Cantor to strike a deal, but House Republicans wouldn't budge without the removal of the American Indian protections, making this the first time that the act failed to be reauthorized since it was signed in 1994. The contested provision regarding American Indians gives tribal authorities power to prosecute perpetrators of violence even if they are non-Indians. Bad River Tribal Chairman Mike Wiggins, the tribe's attorney, and other tribal members will be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on January 8th to discuss their concerns about a proposed iron ore mine in northern Wisconsin. The tribe plays an integral role in the approval process because of its authority to regulate water qualities on tribal lands. Bad River leaders have opposed plans by Gogebic Taconite to construct a massive $1.5 billion iron ore mine in Ashland and Iron Counties. Wiggins has expressed concerns that construction of the mine would be harmful to tribal lands, including wild rice beds, which lie downstream from the site of the proposed mine. Republican legislative leaders say that a bill rewriting mining legislation will be the first measure introduced in the 2013 session. Gogebic has demanded changes in the state mining laws before it moves forward with the permitting process. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker made stops in Milwaukee, Green Bay, and Schofield on January 2nd, touting the economic importance of an iron ore mine. Sanford Health, the country's largest rural nonprofit hospital system, is hiring two traditional Native American healers to train medical staff in the Dakotas and Minnesota in an effort to better serve the American Indian patient population. The traditional healers will act as advisors to health care workers to develop training and curriculum about the American Indian culture and will consult with medical staff on when, if may be appropriate, to use traditional healing techniques in conjunction with modern medicine. The two healers won't necessarily be performing traditional healing ceremonies, but advising clinics in the three states on when a ceremony may be necessary and how to use local resources to make it happen. In addition to the healers, the health system is hiring a cultural and diversity specialist to understand and serve patients from a variety of cultural backgrounds. Plus, as part of being selected for a Bush Foundation Fellowship, they will visit different communities all over the world over the next few years to see firsthand how some hospital systems are able to serve indigenous communities by blending Western medicine with traditional healing. Native American Public Telecommunications has announced its official new corporate name, Vision Maker Media. After a year of study, the Board of Directors approved the name change this past summer. This new name also includes a new logo, an eagle and silhouette captured in flight. In February, to coincide with the organization's 37th anniversary, they will be launching a new website that will focus on serving their multi-client base through defined user needs and an easy of functionality user interface design. For more information, you can check out visionmakermedia.org. 
And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me. Have a grand day.